Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching 2001 A Space Odyssey. What do you know about this? Not a lot. It won our sci-fi Patreon poll. Yeah, so we would like to thank all our patrons for voting on this to win our sci-fi movie poll. And I don't really know much about this either. I know it's Stanley Kubrick, which we've seen two films from him so far. Yes. Uh, Full Metal Jacket and... The Shining. The Shining. Both have been excellent films. Yeah. And just from the recommendations for this movie and the comments that we've received, it sounds like it might be like a love it or hate it. So I'm just super excited to watch another Stanley Kubrick, Kubrick film. Yeah, I think I've probably said it both ways. Kubrick, Kubrick. Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> But I'm excited too. So if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we have reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all of those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. That's a cool shot. The moon, the earth, and the sun, I think. His name come up right as the... <laughs> that was a pretty epic intro. Yeah. Stanley and his music. Whoa. Going back pretty far. I can already tell that this is just going to have a series of incredible shots. Mm -hmm. So far, they all look like paintings. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Is that like a mammoth skull? That's human. And then something right. else. Oh. Oh. scared me yeah i thought it was gonna throw up really cool costumes that they have jeez mm -hmm. oh, oh is one of them gonna discover fire <laughs> holy shit okay that was pretty shocking yeah especially since that was probably just a real person who got attacked <laughs> what's this one doing sneaking up Mm, there's a couple of them. Yeah, I think we're about to have like a little fight. Pretty terrifying. All of them. They were successful. Yeah, they just got the water. Kind of just gave it up without a fight. Well, so far for a movie called Space Odyssey, I didn't think we would be watching The Dawn of Man. Yeah, not at all what I expected so far. <laughs> These costumes are just like seem ultra realistic. Yeah. It's like the mouths when they open their yeah, mouths and stuff. That's what I was focusing on too, the mouths. Something's going on with the music. What the heck? What are these things called? Like a monolith? Yeah. We just had like a whole wave of people putting these around. Just with this music, it feels so eerie. Mm-hmm. It's like haunting. Yeah. What is this going to do for him? All right. It's like a hard cut on that music. Yeah. That final shot too. Jeez. Did you learn something? Looks like a learn how to use tools. So this one learned how to bash stuff. Oh. wonder if the encounter with the other group is going to go a little differently now that it knows how to hit things. Yeah. Were they eating meat before, too? Eating, like, bugs and... Yeah. The grass. Right. A little baby? Yeah. Well, too. <laughs> I think those were real monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And it taught all its friends use it as a weapon and take a swing. They are going to put up a fight this time. Oof. Well, I think they've claimed that spot. Yeah. So the dawn of man is violence. Whoa. You just jump forward? I 
mean, I should have looked when this was made, but this is super impressive visually. Mm-hmm. I know, I'm just like drawn into it. A lot of different types of spaceships too. I was trying to figure out how big these were. That's cool. This is really cool. Not very many people. Oh, she's staying down. Grip, Grip shoes. shoes. We're pretty close to commercial space travel too. I like that he's just like weightless. Right, just, That's yeah. Cool. I feel like this whole movie, we're just gonna be talking about how incredible these shots are. I'm sure the behind the scenes of how this was made is ultra impressive. That's cool, they have like a station below and a station yeah, above and they're all <laughs> they're like dancing in unison now. Wow. Yeah. There's really just two people on that flight <laughs> besides the pilots. Did you have a pleasant flight, sir? That's very nice, thanks. We were almost about 30 minutes into the movie before we had any dialogue. Moon, American, Floyd. Haywood R. You are cleared through voice print identification. That's cool. Yeah. Because you don't need passports in space. <laughs> Your flight leaves in an hour and ten minutes. So this isn't even the final destination. This is just like a layover. Yeah. I got a couple of phone calls. You go on ahead in the restaurant. I'll meet you there. Right. It's cool that it's like curved, like they're walking in it. Right. Yeah, what a view. Oof, I feel like that'd make me dizzy. <laughs> Hello. How are you, Squirt? Bye-bye. Happy birthday. <laughs> Pretty cheap to call from space. All right, yeah. Pretty long distance. Good it said this is the Hilton. Right. Man, just a would casual you, would you like a business drink? meeting in space. Right, I'm just on my way up to Clavius. Oh, are you? Mm -hmm. past uh, two weeks, some extremely odd things have been happening at Clavius. The phone lines are temporarily out of order. That's interesting. I mean, you haven't been able to contact anyone for the past 10 days. You're sending him in there? Either he knows exactly what's going on, or they just sent him into danger. Quite a serious epidemic has broken out at Clarice. Something apparently of an unknown origin is in fact what has happened. You're not going to get that answer. I'm really not at liberty to discuss this. All right. That's weird. Well, whatever the reasons for your visit to Clavius, Dr. Floyd, the very best of luck to you. Oh, thank you. Oh, something real bad's going on. Yeah. It's like top secret. An unknown origin, too. Are we dealing with aliens? Or like a bacterial infection or something like that? Yeah, I took it as like an illness type of thing, but... Why is he like the only person on all of these <laughs> flights? Oh, he missed dinner, too, because he was asleep. You're drinking it? Oh, this is weird. Oh, dang, that was so trippy. I wasn't expecting her to be totally upside down. I do like the designs of all the different types of... Oh, he's awake. Zero gravity toilet. It's a lot of instructions. <laughs> I'm sure someone just had like an amazing time designing all of these different spaceships. <laughs> That's cool. Just get to watch the ships land. Whoa. Yeah. I've had like a feeling like we've been watching like a ballet, like this whole movie, obviously with the music. To give this like mysterious story in the middle of like, just Art. <laughs> right, yeah. Perfect. This is huge. Yeah. You just realize, like, the people. I was just about to say that side there. the scale of everything is so impressive. But they're able to make it look so big because they have the little tiny people everywhere. Kind of looks like a face. Yeah. Congratulations on your discovery. Among the most significant in the history of science. They find life? Opposition to the cover story. Created to give the impression there's an epidemic at the base. Oh, okay. The cultural shock and social disorientation contained in this present situation. Have you any idea how much longer this cover story will have to be maintained? I suppose it'll be maintained as long as deemed necessary by the council. Pretty open-ended. 
I feel like I'd be worried to know whatever this is. Right. Unless they discovered another monolith, like the other one that was put on Earth. I forgot about that. Probably be a reason to tie that in. <laughs> I mean, that would be a pretty shocking discovery. If it's not life, at least it's signs that life may have already existed. I'm absolutely going to have to watch a making of or something of this movie. Space is kind of terrifying. Right? I like how everything's just totally silent except yeah. for the soundtrack. Oh, anybody hungry? Oh, uh, great. Oh. What's that, chicken? Something like that. Tastes <laughs> the same anyway. <laughs> you know, that was an excellent speech you gave us, Haywood. It certainly was. I thought it was pretty dark and vague. Our job to do this thing the way you want it done. Not even a big nickel iron meteorite could produce a field as intense as this. Seems to have been deliberately buried. Huh. You're sure of is it was buried four million years ago. Four million? So they excavated right around it, right? Right. Oh, it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> I was looking at the Earth. <laughs> I got the same soundtrack as when it first originated on Earth. So I wonder if it's the same one? Or whatever alien species dropped them off on a bunch of planets or something. But did the previous monolith spark that change or that innovation? Right. Is this going to spark some sort of jump in technology or something? I mean, not much has changed. They're all going to gather around at it and... Touch it and wonder with no idea what it is. First to touch it. I'm just like waiting for something bad to happen with this soundtrack. Is it gonna like a photo? I think he's been taking. Oh shit. Ooh. I got the chills. 18 months later? Another super cool spaceship. Yeah. Every single one is different. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, I'm trying to think in my head, like, how do you do this? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I'm still, like, running through a million different scenarios in my head. of like, okay, how would I do this? Like, sleep pods, or...? So I wonder if they found another monolith... On Jupiter? On Jupiter. So crazy. This marks the first manned attempt to reach this distant planet. So they haven't gone to Jupiter yet. Took seven minutes for our words to reach the giant spacecraft. One of the latest generation of the HAL 9000 computers in wishing you a safe and successful voyage. Thanks very much. Thank you. This interview must have taken hours if they had to wait seven minutes for every response. As I understand it, you only breathe once a minute. Is this true? And the heart beats three times a minute. Three times a minute? The HAL 9000 computer. HAL? Most of the activities of the human brain. Uh-oh. Yeah. You're the brain and central nervous system of the ship. Does this ever cause you any lack of confidence? <laughs> no 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information and incapable of error. After Alien, I don't, I don't trust robots. I have a stimulating relationship with Dr. Poole and Dr. Bowman. This is weird. One gets the sense that he is capable of emotional responses. The real feelings is something I don't think anyone can truthfully answer. I don't trust it. We wish you the very happiest of birthdays. God bless. All the best, son. Just imagine Hal, like, hearing this and being like, it's your birthday? <laughs> Mistake number one is giving a computer the ability to feel like it's human. Bishop takes night's poem. I love him all. It's got to be impossible to beat, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, Frank. I think you missed it. Knight takes Bishop. Mate. Yeah, hey, it looks <laughs> like you're right. It's gotta be so frustrating. Thank you for a very enjoyable game. <laughs> so trippy. Yeah. You've been doing some more work? May I see them? Sure. That's Dr. Hunter, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I've wondered whether you might be having some second thoughts about the mission. Oh. Perhaps I'm just projecting my own concern about it. Your computer's concerned? You don't mind talking about it, do you, Dave? The way all our preparations were kept under such tight security. 
already in hibernation after four months of separate training on their own. Whoa. I've just picked up a fault in the AE-35 unit. 100% failure within 72 hours. That is pretty concerning that your super AI pal is concerned about the mission and questioning all of the little details that are unknown. I mean, that alone is weird, but I also am like with Hal. Those things are weird. Right, yeah, no, those are weird circumstances. It's like, do they even know they're on here? Yeah. <laughs> they're going to wake up and be like, where the hell am I? Makes me feel like they all have their own individual missions. Right. And replace Alpha Echo, a 3-5 unit, prior to failure. Literally, like, every shot is just designed to impress. Yeah. It's like pods that go out? Yeah. A repair on, like, the exterior, I believe. Oh. Just the sound design of this movie, too. Just hearing nothing other than his breathing. Open the pod doors, Hal. Hal has literally full control of everything. Oh. This is giving me, like, crazy anxiety. <laughs> the breathing is, like, freaking me out. faster. Yeah, I feel like he's breathing a little bit deeper and faster. They seem really far. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize he had to get out. I thought he could do the repairs with this ship. Yeah, I thought those little arms were like... You couldn't get any closer? Is he attached to something? No. And then to get back, he's gotta jump back to the, the ship? Sometimes if he misses. Now, this seems like extremely dangerous. Must be why his breathing is getting heavier and heavier. Now he's like slowing it down when he has to be all careful. Yeah. Okay, so mission success. I think they gotta figure out why this one went wrong in the first place. It's like a game of operation. Yeah. Well, hell, I'm damned if I can find anything wrong with it. It's puzzling. I'll just send him out there for nothing? That we put the unit back in operation and let it fail. No. To be out of communication for the short time it will take to replace it. No. That seems like a terrible idea to not have communication. We concur with your plan to replace number one unit to check fault prediction. Niner triple zero computer is in error predicting the fault. So how made an error? The results from our twin uh, Niner triple zero computer. I hope the two of you are not concerned about this. It can only be attributable to human error. And it has always been due to human error. Quite honestly, I wouldn't worry myself about that. I'm having a bit of trouble with my transmitter and seat pod. I wonder if you'd come down and take a look at it with me. Yeah, they're going to go have a little secret conversation. Hal's still there, though. Where can they get away from him? Yeah, there's got to be a spot that they know of where Hal can't see or hear. Go inside the pod. Oh. Uh... Yeah, there's Hal behind Open him. Open the door, Hal. Yeah, Hal's just watching him. Can't see him anymore. Rotate by, please, Hal. Oh, well, yeah. Oh. Rotate the pod, Whoa. please, Hal. So quiet. Rotate the pod, please, Hal. <laughs> Scream it. But can I Hal bad feeling about read lips? Because he can see him. Yeah. Now's in series having a perfect operational record. Unfortunately, that sounds a little like famous last words. Well, we'd be in very serious trouble. We would, wouldn't we? Mm-hmm. What the hell can we do? There isn't a single aspect of ship operations that's not under his control. I wouldn't see how he'd have any choice but disconnection. Well, I'm not so sure what he'd think about it. I mean, if it feels like he's human, it's got to feel like they're killing him. Oh, he is watching their lips. They should have had this thing the other way where Hal couldn't see inside. Okay, break time. <laughs> that deep breathing. Yeah. Putting the original back in. I'm afraid of Hal just, like, not letting him back in. Right, yeah. Or just, like, sending the ship away. Especially if Hal can read lips, he knows... Their plan. Their plan. I think the other person is doing it this time. I think so, too. They swapped. Did it move last time? I don't think so. Yeah, no, it definitely didn't do this last time. Oh, man. Oh my god. It just like cut his oxygen and then sent him flying. 
Wow, Hal just straight up murdered him. I'm sorry, Dave. I don't have enough information. Open the pod door, Hal. I think he's pretty dead and he's pretty far. Explosive bolts. Well, I guess his first instinct is to go get him, but he doesn't realize that Hal knows. Yeah. So. How terrifying. He's really got to get a move on, though. Yeah, I mean, Hal can just completely lock him out now. Is that him? Mm hmm. This is so slow, it's stressing me out. <laughs> it's getting much closer. Yeah. You try to grab him? Yeah, I mean, he's got no other choice because he doesn't even have a helmet. Mm hmm. Almost. These three people in these pods are like. Extreme risk. I feel like how could just shut off their like life support in there or something. Oh wow, he's killing all three of them. Jeez, what an evil freaking computer! Just like that, they went to sleep and never got up. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Not going to. Hello, Hal. Do you read me? Jeez. Affirmative, Dave. I read you. I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. I could see your lips move. Jeez. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave, you're going to find that rather difficult. Goodbye. Oh my god. He's just alone in space with an evil computer. Man, what can he do? I mean, just crash? Try to crash inside? No, I feel like he's screwed. I know he was in a hurry, but I can't believe he didn't grab his helmet. Right. He's going for it. Let him go. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. I have another choice. I guess maybe you can open it, turn this thing around, jump out the back, and then hopefully close the door behind you fast enough so that you don't die. But then even the inside won't be... Right, It's unless he can... He's going to have to, yeah. like, do a bunch of things all at once. Doesn't have another choice. And try to seal it off. Yeah, I mean, if he jams this up against a door, it might just get in as quickly as you, as you can. It's going to be so painful. I'd have to imagine. Well, it kept showing us explosive bolts, explosive bolts. Yep, there it is again. I assume it's just going to shoot the door out. And maybe he'll go flying with it. I don't know. Oh. Oh, shit. Come on, close it. He got in. I was pissed about that. Ooh, and he got a helmet on. Just what do you think you're doing, Dave? <laughs> Dave, let's talk about this. I really think I'm entitled to an answer to that question. After he just shut off the last conversation. And killed four people. That it's going to be all right again. <laughs> Fuck you, Hal. I can see you're really upset about this. <laughs> no more talking. My complete assurance. Dang. This is like the brain. My... Oh, literally like behind Hal. Just like the calm Stop. talking Will of you? Hal. As he's like being killed. I'm afraid. That's so creepy. My mind is going. Wow, killing his memory. I can feel it. And he taught me to sing a song. This is so creepy. I can sing it for you. No. I'd like to hear it now. Oh. Probably see how much of him is left. You see. I've heard this sound before. Me, your answer to This is the slowest death of a computer. This is a pre recorded briefing. Who's that? Has been known on board by your HAL 9000. Oh my gosh. First evidence of intelligent life off the Earth. Radio emission aimed at Jupiter, its origin and purpose still a total mystery. So Hal knew that all along. Wow, yeah. we're actually getting to Jupiter? Yeah, I figured he'd be turning that ship around. I thought that was going to be way more evil. I thought it was going to be like, you've successfully killed Hal. 
we were testing out like a system your ship will now <laughs> that's where i thought it was going to <laughs> it's just in oh. space i wonder if he has the ability to go out and get it now that he turned off how that's really cool it just lined up perfectly yeah whoa whoa I didn't see it at first. Yeah, it's like only if it's reflecting. What the heck? You just get like sucked in through like a wormhole or something. Oof. Oh, this must have been an absolute experience to see in theaters. Terrifying. Dang, still clearly alive. He's getting pulled through space right now. Is he watching like formations of galaxies or something? Is he still falling through this? Like I really don't know. Looks like like an embryo. Yeah. Is that him? I think so. It's like he's like underneath ice. He actually made it somewhere? Yeah. This kinda looks like the beginning. Right? I'm like, is this gonna wrap all the way around? Like, did he just get, like, ripped through time and space to become the dawn of man? Just going so intense with these colors and the soundtrack. Okay, it's clearing up a little. That's cool. It changes every time he blinks. Oh. Yeah, that's normal. What the heck? Uh-oh. That was a lot for him to experience. Yeah, he's not well. This is absolutely not what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> he would end up in some room. Oh, we can hear him breathing again. This is like old Whoa, him. Oh, yeah. What? There's nothing there, though. This just like suddenly turned to a very scary horror movie. It's like, how long was he traveling through? Space? Time? Space and time <laughs> and the universe. It's like oh. he aged, but he doesn't seem familiar with this. Right. Did he get picked up by like aliens and they just made this for him? Because they were like, oh, this is what humans like? It's like he's in a cage or something. It's like a two-way mirror. What the heck is going on? This guy doesn't have a spacesuit on. Oh. Is this him, him again? Yeah, it's him again. Just even older. Well, the last time he looked at himself, the previous disappeared. Yeah. I mean, he's aged a decent amount every single time. If he sees himself again, it's going to be a dead body. Yeah. There's someone breathing, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was just like trapped in this room for eternity? For, I guess, the rest of his life? Yeah. Whoa. So now he's an embryo? Giant. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That was 2001 A Space Odyssey. Super interesting. What'd you think? I mean, I actually really liked it. Yeah? I feel like I just like watched like a live work of art. That's how I feel like. I feel like this movie was incredibly stunning with some of its shots. And I'll talk about that more later, but it felt like it was art in front of a movie. It's like, like the story of the movie was like a back seat yeah. just to kind of set up different pieces of art for us to look at. Yeah, I, I agree. And I did actually really like the story with Hal and those two men and then all like the three people in the pods, you know, the journey also like to the moon. Right, even the beginning with, uh, I think his name was Hayward or something. Uh, I don't really remember, but the first individual who went to the moon and, uh, and they first discovered the monolith. And I've never seen a movie like this. No. First of all. No. There probably isn't anything like this. Because the movie starts with about 30 minutes of just no dialogue and it's mostly, I don't know what the correct term would be because it's not really monkeys, missing link, I don't know. We'll just say monkeys for now. And they're just kind of like messing around and stuff and then you have this monolith come that kind of immediately cuts to space. Yeah. And you're kind of wondering like, why did we just see 30 minutes of that? Yeah. And then, you know, as you get a little bit further on, you're like, oh, okay. Like originally I thought they found life on the moon. And then it wasn't until very, like almost right before they revealed it that I was like, oh, it's gotta be another monolith. Which kind of does prove that there is life. Yeah, exactly. It's not actual life, but it does prove that there's life out there. 
But I, I just really thought that was impressive because in the beginning, I thought it was just like, okay, that was just an artsy thing that they did for the beginning of the movie. But no, it, it ties into the whole story of the movie that these monoliths are playing a role in something. Mm -hmm. And then I, I really liked how, you know, in the beginning, you kind of see all the monkeys like wondering what this is and their curiosity and they gather around, they touch it, they don't understand it. And then here we are way in the future, super advanced, and it's still a bunch of humans gathering around, super curious, touching it, don't understand what's going on. They don't know anything more than what the monkeys knew. Exactly. I know they're not monkeys, but... <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, the dawn of man scene. Right. I was a little nervous in the beginning. Um, obviously, we had no idea what this film was about, and... It was a decent amount of time that we spent in the beginning just with the animals and kind of establishing that. And I was like, I don't know where this is going to go. No, right? Like 2001 Space Odyssey, I thought, okay, space movie. And yeah. I mean, it's a while. Yeah. I think that's something that is very evident that this movie is slow in a good way. Mm -hmm. It really takes its time more than I've ever seen in any movie to give you scenes that it just stays on that scene or scenarios like I don't think there you would see a movie where someone would be like yes I approve of 30 minutes of these you know monkeys in the beginning of the movie they would probably be like no chop that down to like two minutes like we got to get things going here yeah and even the end when we're like moving through that was space like space or time or whatever that was yeah. That was a decent amount of time too, just like going through the visuals of everything with flashes. Right. I mean, that was like 10, 15 minutes of the movie was just visual shots of like landscape with different colors and a zoom of is like a uh, pupil. Mm -hmm. That's something that obviously sets us apart because you just wouldn't see that in a movie theater. No, everything now is so fast paced and it's not about like appreciating what you're watching a lot not a lot of things right there's a, there's a, a heavier emphasis on the entertainment value mm -hmm. some of these scenes like even um when he's uh, dave is going to go rescue his friend even that's a scene that takes way longer than mm -hmm. you would ever expect i mean it's just like this like slow eventually you start seeing him get a little bit bigger mm -hmm. and bigger and bigger but literally everything in this movie is just like two to three times longer than you would probably expect right but, but it gives you the time to look at it and be like this is beautiful whatever i'm whatever i'm looking at is astonishing yeah no it gives you the time to appreciate everything that you're looking at i mean we touched on it multiple times throughout but how it was shot, what we're looking at, the colors, the music, like all of it was just incredible. Yeah, there were so many scenes where I was like, this is beautiful. What was that, like the Nutcracker or something? Like what was that soundtrack when like even the first spaceship that was a circular one that was spinning and you had like almost the plane-like spaceship that like had to sync in rhythm yeah, with the so spin. Yeah, so it could get, get in. Yeah, yeah. so it, it like, and then it cut to their perspective and everything's totally normal, but then it cuts out and everything's just spinning like crazy. And you know, it felt like you were literally watching like a ballet, like a yeah. dance. Every single spaceship was different and unique. The interiors, how they placed humans for scale and size in almost every single scene. Yeah, that was really clever. It was just on a technical level, Astonishing. I mean, we went into this not knowing when this was filmed. And so it's 1968. That's very hard to comprehend. This movie is 53 years old and it looks like one of the best movies I've ever visually looked at. Yeah, I feel like if this came out today, I would not question it. I would, I would look at it and be like, that was an amazing combination of practical effects and CGI. Yeah. And that's not true because it's <laughs> just has to be all practical effects like trickery of the camera like there's so many scenes where i'm like i don't even know how? How, how they did that yeah that's even more impressive so what this movie must have influenced after this everything is like pretty much everything yeah like every sci-fi film not even just sci-fi I, I don't really know much more to say about i mean we've just touched on it so many times but it really is the truth like there's just so many iconic scenes i mean even it's like stuff that doesn't it doesn't make sense like you would see how and it's just a red dot it's just like a red light and i'd be like "Ooh, how looks pissed yeah 
And it's like, how? How do? Why am I thinking that? It's literally the same. They film that, and they just use the same two second shot for every single moment that they zoomed in. Like, I don't know if that's true, but they could have. But every single time I looked at it, I'd be like, oh, that's a different emotion Hal has. Yeah. What they must have done to get some of this stuff to look as great as it did. It's just so incredibly impressive. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Honestly, I'm like still blown away by just like the visuals and then always the music. Like I, yeah. that can like make or break like a movie for me. Oh yeah. And it was so crisp. Like everything that we were listening to, whether it was the breathing or that it was the use of music, anything, like it took over that like entire scene is just, what are we listening to? Oh yeah, the soundtrack that they had when there was when they were looking at the monolith, it just sounded like a bunch of just like ghosts. Yeah. You know, and the use of the silence and then breathing or silence and then it would cut inside and you would have the flashing and the computer noises and stuff. And yeah, just on every level, I mean, on a film level, on the editing level, on the the sound mixing, like everything was just so impressive. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm honestly shocked that this was 1968. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, exactly like you said, it could come out today and people would be like, that's a fantastic looking movie. But just the limitations, or not necessarily limitations, but how far technology has come to allow for some of this stuff to be done way simpler. Mm -hmm. But they didn't have any of that resources in 1968. I'm really curious how long this took to make this film. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, because, I would like to learn more. Because you think of it, it's like, even though so much was so impressive, there's not a lot. Yeah. So. I, I mean, it probably was excruciating to get those few things taken care of. But for the most part, like a lot of this is like, I'm sure like the final sequence where we had all that color stuff, they were probably just like, I don't know, maybe in a helicopter or something. And they just filmed and got a bunch of shots and then they threw it and changed the color. Yeah. On one side, I could be like, this could be simpler to film. But then on the other side, it's like, this is probably the most complex thing to film. So it's, <laughs> I'm really curious to see like a behind the scenes of this. Yeah, no, I, this was incredible. I had absolutely no idea what we were getting into and I'm extremely impressed. You still really enjoyed the story mm -hmm. because it was intriguing. I mean, it really did, it was like a backseat to this movie, which is strange to even say. But um, the first kind of intrigue of the mystery of what's going on on the moon was very impressive. And then this whole, like you said, the two men dealing with Hal, like that kicked off right away because the way that they started talking about Hal from the very beginning was like, this does not seem okay. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah, they're like, oh yeah, we gave Hal emotions and the ability to feel like a human. And that's a smart idea, right? And it's never once ever made a mistake. And it's like, okay, well, you're telling me that this is supposed to be perfect and I'm literally further the furthest into space that humans have ever gone so you're just setting me up for failure <laughs> uh, but it was a super engaging story and I didn't what do you think of like the ending how do you what do you think that means I really have no idea I think that he maybe ended up in like honestly like a different dimension and I liked what you said that maybe you know the aliens built him this room or the space that felt familiar so that he could grow old there don't know anything about the baby embryo giant yeah or <laughs> earth-sized embryo well at least scale wise it looked like that or we were just we were very just really close, close to, to the it. embryo <laughs> but uh, no I, I i agree like I, I think alien species made these monoliths created this room for him to kind of grow old in because he was in this alternate dimension, like you're saying, like there's no concept of time really. So, you know, he was kind of aging very quickly, but also each individual person also kind of seemed like they were familiar with the place and had been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like he suddenly shifted to older and was like, where am I? Like every single time it seemed like that person had been there for that equivalent amount of time. Yeah. And then because you're in this alternate weird space that their time is weird, it almost like it wrapped him all the way very back to the beginning. And the way that I'm gonna kind of take it is the monolith then sent him back to earth 
is as we're flying through that landscape, I'm gonna assume that's a barren earth because mm -hmm. there was nothing there. Yeah. So I'm just going to assume that that was like life coming to earth. I don't know. That's where I'm going with. Yeah, no, I like it. I think that it's definitely completely up for interpretation. Like many movies we've seen, I'm very excited to kind of look in to be like, what did I miss? What, what interpretation is there? What other like themes that did other people pick up on? Yeah, like what and what was Stanley's you know interpretation? Like what was his intention to show us to put this out? Which is I feel like what we kind of experienced at the end of The Shining. At the end of Shining and also at, at Full Metal Jacket. Full Metal Jacket ended in like a kind of interesting space mm -hmm. as well. Like it, it doesn't seem, so this is our third movie. It doesn't seem like there's like this like neat little bow mm -mm. on the end of any of his movies where things are perfectly wrapped up. Right. It just leaves me wanting more. Mm -hmm. That was a wild experience. I can only imagine seeing that in the theaters in like the late 60s, early 70s, maybe <laughs> under an influence of some kind or something but that must have been absolutely wild yeah so if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this as well as everything else that we have reacted to the link to our patreon is in the description if you would like to interact with us on any other types of social media all those links are in the description as well and with that peace everyone bye bye